Welcome to a well-designed business with your host, Luan Nigara. Luann has a lifetime of experience building a multi-million dollar business with her husband and cousin, and she knows the challenges you face in your interior design business. Luann brings you real-life answers to your most pressing problems, as well as practical strategies to explode your interior design business. So, let's get to the business of interior design. Hi, welcome to another episode of A Well-Designed Business. Today is our third show in the series, which has been sponsored by Certified Cruelty-Free Design. Cruelty-Free Design, as you know by now if you've been listening, is the heart project, the brainchild of Deborah Rosenberg of Damari Design in Miami, Florida. If you're not sure and you ha- this is the first time maybe you're catching the show... Do yourself a favor, go back and listen to number 82. Episode 82 is where we met Deborah Rosenberg. We hear all about Damari Design and her business and what goes on and how she runs her firm. It's a good show. Then you have episode 117 where she starts to tell us and really in detail explain the CEU course that she created, which is Certified Cruelty-Free Design. And then we have the sponsored series. This is the third show, as I said. The first show was episode 212. Deborah again gave us an outline of the course and the things that the reasons for the course and why it's so important to think about maybe possibly doing this in your interior design firm or at least having it as an offering for your clients. And then we had episode 218 back again with Deborah where she explained the resources and marketing of certified cruelty free design. And today we are going to meet Rochelle DeCecco. Rochelle is an interior design student in Australia. She is in her last and final semester. And when she heard about certified cruelty-free design, she wanted to take the course. And today she shares with us her impressions of the course, what she feels about the content of the course, and how she expects to use it in her coming career as an interior designer. So sit tight, and I'm going to introduce you to Rochelle DeCecco. Hey, Rochelle, thank you so much for joining me on A Well-Designed Business today. Hey, Luann, how are you? Thanks for having me. Happy to have you today. I'm looking forward to this conversation because you are the third installment, as I said in the introduction, of this sponsored program for cruelty-free design. And I'm, I'm excited to hear about what your opinions are and what your observations are as an interior designer who's been through Deborah's course. She is clearly very passionate about the cruelty-free course that she's developed and with good reason, but it's, I'm, I'm very curious to hear it from you now. So uh, before we get into it, Rochelle, would you tell me a little bit mm-hmm. about what drew you to the course and, um, actually, and you know, why, why you were, you know, compelled to take the course? Oh, yes, of course. You know, um, well, basically what drew me to the course is that I sort of felt alone in in Australia, actually, um, about, you know, the, the sort of cruelty and uh, the cruelty and the atrocity that happens behind um, a lot of the manufacturing industries, such as wool, down and the fur and reptile industries. Um, so that that was the one main thing that sort of drew me is because I'm, I'm an animal advocate. Um, I'm so I'm an animal activist and I love to help whenever I can and I'm studying the interior design course. Um, so I basically want to create a sense of difference and when I found this course that um, is offered through certifiedcruelty-free.net, I thought, you know what, I'm going to try and see what I can do to, um, you know, assist me in the future and also assist the animals in the future. So that's really what drew me. Um basically just um it's really important that i be aware of the the things that go behind the scenes and if i can make a difference and that's great and this course will allow me that opportunity okay and the thing is it's really i mean i i'm it's the only one that i'm aware of i mean when you were doing your research and trying to find the course did you find Mm. multiple options and this just settled onto it as look like the best one or is deborah really she is really a pioneer in this regard isn't she well Yeah, absolutely. She's an absolutely inspirational woman. And when I was researching through a number of different courses, I wasn't able to find anything that sort of stood out. I don't think there's actually any course, to be honest. Even in Australia, there's none like this at all. And when I came across it, um, I just jumped on it. And it was something that sort of immediately captured 
my attention and I wanted to take on board all the insight, all the things that they were trying to provide in the course. So, um, I, yeah, when I was researching it through, there was no other courses like it. Um, yes, yeah, right? Yes, so she really the, is on hmm. the cutting edge of something here. So there Absolutely. Are, there are two things yep. that I want to cover with the interview. The first aspect of it is I want to cover the actual taking of the course and what that is like. And then I also, before I let mm. you go, I want to speak to you about your impressions of the course and, and your thoughts on it. So first, of let's course. cover basically the technical side of it. So just for anybody yep. listening, is it technically easy to just sign up how does it you know talk to us for a minute oh, yeah. about actually taking the course what are you doing how are you okay. doing it so basically all you do is just you just jump online so certified cruelty free.net um and right there on their, on their website they've got the online course tab and once you basically get to that page you just register there and once you register that's you're basically good to go. They send you a link and you have, I think it's about seven and a half hours to do the course, but you take, you can take your time. You have it for two months. Um, it's extremely flexible. You can opt in and out whenever you want. So it's really, really flexible on you. And I don't think there's any other, you know, way of making right. it any easier for anyone. So, yeah. Okay, so what happens is you 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 purchase your course. It's you know you have mm -hmm. the the modules on your computer and so forth. How men, How mm -hmm. long did it take you to do it? Did you do it over a course uh, of weeks, days, months? How did you do it? Well, it took me about maybe a few days. Um, so it wasn't actually long, but because the there are four or five modules. Uh, um, basically, each each module. Once you've done with all the modules, you have an assignment for each of those modules so um you know that's really up to you uh, you know when you want to take it you can do the um assignment at, a, at another day or if you want to do it straight away then that's also um something that you can do at any time um so i sort of had it between um one or two or three days over the course of my um over the course of this of this session so it wasn't really long um you can do it within a day if you really if you really want want to and the assignments are relatively easy because all the answers are within the modules and it takes you through all the all the things that you need to know anyway so um yeah it's basically that's that's okay. how long it really takes it doesn't take that long and how about the content of it without talking about your reactions and emotions mm -hmm. for it right now but did you feel that there was a lot of content in the program oh, absolutely there was there was a lot more content than what I've actually expected, mm. um, only because it's it's extremely relevant to me um, as an interior design student and who who's wanting to become an interior designer after. Um, all this content is so it's just you you are armed with knowledge, too much knowledge actually, and then you mm. just sort of can't unsee what you've seen, and mm. you want to take that further on once you you know become a qualified designer or if you are a designer and. It's just it, it changes who you are. So mm. definitely um, a lot of content there. Okay. And how about support? What if you had questions mm -hmm. or you didn't understand things or you needed clarification? Oh. Is there support there for someone taking Absolutely. the course? Absolutely. Oh, yes. Because that was the one thing that I was also, you know, considering if I do this online course will I have support mm. as a student you'd want that support um so there's so many ways you can get in touch with people Deborah is accessible also once you do the course um there's all these private chats there's social forums um they have like on their website they've actually got the social forums so, so you can get in touch with anyone anywhere around the world with any questions that you may have and you know you're continually having um chats with people and there's even a live chat there so it's you know, you're not alone. And that mm. is the one thing that makes you, you know, be part mm. of this process. It's, it's a growing number of socially aware um, consumers out there. So you're not 
Yeah, okay. it's prices so is you're great. once you uh, purchase the course, you're then part of the different social groups that Deborah and her team have set up so that you now have other interior Correct. designers that you're interacting with and asking them about their experiences and bouncing ideas off of. You're there with your, yes. your with your tribe of people that think and feel and <laughs> believe much. like you do, right? <laughs> Correct. Yeah, you're pretty much with your tribal people, as you said. Um, you know, you're... you're you're kind of connected with so many people with like-minded people and you don't feel alone, even though I'm all the way here in Australia, um, Mm -hmm. I'm connected with so many people right across, um, different type, you know, different countries. And, and that's just wonderful about it. It brings you together, it keeps you connected. Um, and you start to really learn from other people and you basically, you take that learning experience onto your current journey. So, yeah, it's wonderful. It really is. Okay. It does sound like that it's been very well organized and very well thought out from what I understand from my conversations with Deborah. And you seem to be bearing that out, that everything that she has said that's in there seems to be in there. So you are you would say that yeah. you are quite satisfied, you know, somewhat satisfied where let's do the survey says. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, I am absolutely satisfied with with the course. It's, you know, no doubt that's just my answer for it because you know, it's 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 absolutely relevant for me. Um and it's anyone who's interested in this, you know, or who isn't interested or is not aware, I think it's it once you finish the course, you definitely would be satisfied with what you've seen. Okay. Yeah. So now tell mm. me a little bit about it. So let's get into the yeah, sure. the other side of it. The the execution side as an interior designer, you're looking forward to your career starting in a few months. And mm-hmm. also about the the takeaways that you have from the from participating in it. First of all, what I mean, you go into it as an animal yeah. activist, but were you changed in some way? Were you surprised to look like me? I have not researched this at all. I, yeah. I'm i not an animal activist. I'm not an a- animal, non-animal person, but I, it's not my thing. It's not anything <laughs> I've looked into. Yeah. No, so I'm assuming yeah. you come to it with a certain base knowledge because that's what you're yeah. passionate about. So did you yeah. tell me about it. any changes in your way of thinking? Okay. Well, basically, um, because I, I am, I also am very deeply passionate about animals and the environment that we live in. Um, I just didn't really see the extent of it. Um, and when I found the course, it really did make me sort of realize how, um, I didn't know that much at all. Um, oh, even so though you thought I am, you had an idea of what was going correct. on. Okay. Yes, that's right. Um, I actually thought that, you know, I knew enough about it, but the extent of it, the content that was there and going through all the industries, not just one type of animal, it's basically a whole range of them. And it's, it is, yeah. So, you know, it's one of those things where you go, okay, I didn't know anything actually. Mm. Um, and so you didn't you know what you didn't know, right? Content. Correct. And yeah. I, I had no idea. This is completely eye opening and once you go through for anyone who who isn't like aware of this or isn't an animal activist they don't have to be Mm -hmm. because once you see it you know if you're human you'd understand it you know you'd be like okay this is immoral it's not something that we should do um I have to say in my conversations with Deborah I've said to her point blank I'm mm-hmm. I'm afraid to go watch the videos that she suggested I watch yeah. because I know from talking to her it's going to completely yeah. change me and I'm just like well I mean I I, I it just mm, feels yeah. like a whole resp- it, you know what it, yes. this is really crazy but it's like when you think about well, like starting a family I'm going to have a baby it's sort of yeah. like yeah everybody does it I'll have a baby and then you get mm. a baby and you're like oh my god what am I going to do with this baby <laughs> and so it's, it's sort of like I feel like that it's like oh yeah I yeah. should be an animal activist I should pay attention that I'm but I'm smart enough to know and basically from hearing her <laughs> conversation like if I like you you use the same sentence she used you can't unsee it and so yeah, I am actually right. afraid to look at it and that's look, that's yeah. cowardness on my part I'm, I'm pl- no, flat out it's, there it's it's really not cowardness because I didn't want to see the see, things that I wanted to see as well but um and honestly it it takes a lot of courage to to see that yeah. and the thing is when you do see it you become more educated and that's what really changes your perspective yeah. no it's I I don't know if you understand you what I'm saying like I'm not afraid 
I'm not afraid to see it, to look at yeah. it. I know that I will be, it will probably turn my stomach and from the descriptions mm-hmm. and stuff, but I'm not afraid to look at it. I'm afraid at the way it's going to change me. And right. I'm afraid right. of the responsibility that I will feel the way mm-hmm. Deborah and yourself do. And that's where I'm a complete coward because I'm just like, oh my goodness, right. I don't have, you know, right. I don't, I, 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 I don't know. And so I'm just expressing that I admire you mm-hmm. for doing it. Thank and I, you. yeah, I do. Yeah. I truly do. I admire you for doing it because I think to learn these things And to be completely changed by them and then to Mm -hmm. take the responsibility in your business to be true to this is got to be so huge of an endeavor. It is. It really is. And, you know, like you said, many people will turn at the thought of it and is afraid to look at what they see because... It mm-hmm. will, you know, it's not that they're af- afraid of watching it, but it's just afraid of what will happen to them. Right. Um, so I, I totally understand that. I really do. Um, and it's something that, you know, Deborah is working towards making these consumers yes. um, feel okay about it and see that this is the reality. It's so, It's sort of like not denying the fact that it's there. It's, I well, think that's, that's what really it is. Right important. now, I'm very comfortable mm. in my denial. That's a, that's really it. I'm really admitting a huge shortcoming on this. And it's like, mm. because my brain just says, oh, so wait, it, you know, does my car have leather seats? Like all the, the ramifications yes. just yeah. go rippling I know, through your life. That's exactly it. Right. And you know what? You're not the only one. Everybody is in the same boat. I- I mean, I was in the same boat. I had no idea. I, I even had um, pillows that ha- were made out of f- feather and, mm-hmm. you know, down. And so it was – I didn't know that at all. Like I just right. – when you go through this course, it is one of the things that you go, oh, I had no idea. It right. just didn't make any sense to me that – any of this stuff that I had at home that's just simply there. Right. You know, that's what it um, is. It's just simply there. But it's like, no, it's not actually just simply there. I mean, I've gotten to know Deborah so well over the last eight or nine Mm -hmm. months and I absolutely adore and love her. And I admire her too, because she really not only changed her entire life and, you know, evolved into this thing where she brought it right to her business, but because now she is taking it out to the world and she is turning one person at a time. And she said to me, she goes, I'll get you eventually. And I'm like, I know you will. <laughs> <laughs> I know she will. I know. She's very strong. So she's an amazing woman. Beyond. She has been such an inspiration to me, really. Um, and, you know, for her to pave way for people like me, um, you know, it's it's truly something that I want to become when I finish mm. or graduate. And it is the reason why I got in touch um, with this, you know, course and, being around by like-minded individuals and for her to bring people together, I think that's really inspirational, Mm, you know, and making this change, it only takes one person to make a change really. Um, You know, if she can make a change, yeah, it's a domino effect. Yes. Um, And it might take a while. We still have a lot to go through. So Mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's yeah. just, we, we just have to do what we got to do. Right. One person at a time. So now right. tell me about thinking about taking this information to your, into your design firm. So now you are, in, at this point we're recording, it's July of 2017. You are looking forward to your graduation, as I said in the introduction, to your graduation in December of 2017. What mm-hmm. what what are you thinking? Are you thinking that you'll work for someone else? Or are you thinking you're going to start your own firm? Because I think that's the first question. Uh, and then the second question is how yes. do you expect to incorporate this? Yeah, thanks. So those were those are really good questions. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're like I'm just a kid. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a kid right now. No. Um, basically, I I I want to work for a firm that with like minded. Um, you know, I guess with things that I value, I hope to sort of work for the same, mm-hmm. you know, people um, that value sustainability, that value ethical choices. But that's sort of hard to find mm-hmm. um, in, in Australia, I think, for, for me personally, um, because it, it took me, you know, to do this course. It's all the way in, in the U.S. to right. connect with someone. Um, so it's really hard, but we are paving way to sustainability. And I do want to work for somebody that – that really values that and that values in the environment that we live in. 
Um, and I, I don't think I'd be able to start um, a business on my own right away because I need to be sort of armed with knowledge and, ha- you know, experiencing Good being in a firm and dealing with clients and dealing with suppliers. And um, I sort of need that experience firsthand before I can move forward and doing my own thing. And and I thought, I hope one day that I do because I want to be like a Deborah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah. No, and okay, I so wanna, I hear you. No, so yeah. the thing is it might be a little easier to find a firm that has values that align with the environmental sustainability yeah. issues exactly. at hand because that seems to be just a little ahead of the curve here than the cruelty free and so forth. But so so and yeah. I, I commend you for expecting to work and planning to work for somebody first because you know I fully believe that it is the rare person that comes out of college fully cooked okay no matter what the field is okay (laughs) whether it's interior design or anything else and it's like (laughs) yeah it's the truth I I watch the growth of each of my own children in their first jobs out of college and it doesn't matter how brilliant you are how educated you are there is great value in working for other people that have been right Exactly. So good for you. And so, but I Thank think you. that, yes. So, but I think that what do you, what do you, what do you, I would think you would hope to make little influences. Like if you have the ability in your own projects mm. to use the sources yeah. that Deborah has provided and then maybe yeah. quietly try and nudge your principal in one way or another, who knows, maybe you'll well, be the catalyst catalyst for the hopefully. firm that they all take the cruelty free <laughs> yeah. course. And maybe you'll be mm. the first person in Australia mm. that, you know, encourages a, a firm to be a, a model of like Deborah's firm in Florida, Damari Design. Yeah. And, and that's basically the goal really. Wouldn't that be um, cool? It's- That'd be amazing. That'd be absolutely great. <laughs> and you'll have to come to back on the show that. next year after you've switched <laughs> yeah. the whole firm around. <laughs> yeah, and tell you all about it. <laughs> that's right. Um, no, but that I, seems I, like a good plan that maybe yeah. you would start with a firm that at least is talking about sustainability and those types of issues because that might be a principle that has a little bit more of a soft spot for yeah. looking forward right. to these issues, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so an, a firm that's open to that idea. Mm-hmm. I mean, those who are already taken on sustainability because it's already part of this, you know, right. future. Um, you know, I think the next step is taking on board that cruelty-free stuff. It, and it sort of aligns anyway, sustainability and the mm-hmm. things that we do um, from an ethical point of view. I, it's, I think it's aligned um, and it'll just be taking that on board as mm-hmm. a next step. Let me ask you a question. Have you discussed that you have taken this course with any of your uh, fellow students at your university yeah. or with yeah. your teachers or your professors at the university? Yes, so I've actually spoken to the professors and my, so my lecturers who are also interior designers themselves. They, when I spoke to them about this course, they were really interested in knowing more about the information and mm-hmm. things that I was telling them, the content that I saw, and uh, you know, and I and they're really, really supportive. They've actually, um, you know, they're the ones in in class saying, "Oh, Rochelle, tell us about your experience." Mm-hmm. And so I was able to give my experience to everyone and and what what's really um amazing is that there's so much support that I didn't think that I'd actually get you know that reaction from people um so it was you know people do care and it's I think it's just a matter of providing the right information and being that person who does experience these things and distributing that information to them um So I've spoken to a a number of um, suppliers as well, um, you know, because we do get in touch with them as students Mm. and, you know, saying to them, because that's what really opened my eyes, actually. Um, When you go to these suppliers, you you start to think about, oh, what, you know, wool is actually from, you know, this is what's happening in the wool industry. Mm. Um, And when I talked, chat to them about it, um, they didn't even know. So it's really amazing that no one really knows about these things you, you see the end product you walk through furniture stores and you go oh what a wonderful you know piece of furniture it's a leather furniture but there's actually an ugly truth behind it no one even sales people might not even know it where it's oh, come I'm from sure and how it's sort of been 90 percent of the people probably don't know we, yeah. it's the yeah. truth we it's all just, just walk around and do what we do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 not it's not a pleasant thought to think about that but it is the reality and okay. And I would not expect um, definite, necessarily somebody who is a salesperson in any situation, in any vendor, to understand the 
backstory of all of this stuff. I mean, Deborah's the first person that I ever learned it from. I never even thought about it before. Yeah, you know? exactly. And, you know, that's the one thing that Deborah really, I, I was so amazed by Deborah and uh, the fact that we sort of have the same thinking, the same thoughts on, on things as well. And it's sort of like, you know, this is what it is. You get in touch with the same people. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, because I was an animal activist, but I still had no idea that all of these things were happening. And when I did when I did that course and you go through these suppliers and you walk around talking to people about different types of furniture pieces or fabrics or whatever. And, uh, you know, when I talk to them, it's like, well, actually, Rochelle, I didn't even know about that. Mm. Um, you know, and it, and I, and I hope to one day change that perception and, you know, and start to introduce that, that, that thought, that, you know, ethical decision. It's all about bringing awareness and educating people of what's happening. Mm-hmm. And this is just the reality of it. Now, tell me, talk to me a little bit about projecting yourself seven, eight, nine months from now, working in a firm and maybe on one of your first projects where you have an opportunity to interact with either a senior designer or mm. uh, possibly a client where you're contemplating how will you introduce the conversation and say, would you consider cruelty-free alternatives? Can we maybe not think about specifying mm. leather or feather or something? Have you thought about how you might? I have. have con- okay, so um, tell us about that. And honestly, that was some one of the things that I was thinking about. This is why I did the course. I have so many reasons why I did the course. <laughs> you know, it's what, I, I don't know how to break it to people. It's sort of... Like it's a, it's a challenge, um, and that course teaches you how to you know. Oh, they address it in the course. Yeah, they do. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, basically, when you do, um, I think that pers- from a personal perspective, not a lot of people are aware. So if if I am working for a firm that needs to have certain things like leather and um, wool and whatnot, um, I would. I would still provide them that option, but I think I'd also have another option and say, look, these are equally the same. There's more sustainable solutions Um, because a lot of the time when I was going through that course, um, it it provides sustainable options. There's a lot of other alternatives out there that that, um, are a lot better than fur, wool or... um, Leather. you know, reptile. Yeah, or, rep- yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Leather. And so, and they're a lot more sustainable. They look exactly the same. They look and feel the same. Um, they're more scratch resistant, some of those products. So um, I think that if I was to go out there and speak to a client or speak to my senior interior designers, I'd say, look, there's all these other opportunities as well. There's so many different options. I'll give you that option, but here's another option. Okay. Um, so you're anticipating okay. not being, you know, uh, directly insubordinate with, <laughs> yeah. with your superiors. You'll, you'll source the Yeah, and the, I the don't want to ruin my relationship. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to get fired the first month. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> and I don't want to look like I know what I'm doing, so. Right. I, But that's a good, I like that idea that you will do as you're asked to do and you'll source the product the way you've been instructed to source it, but you'll also just quietly gather two or three options um, and suggest them as alternatives. And the truth is, as we said, you have every intention of really working for a firm that at least is advertising and saying they're interested in sustainability. So they probably are going to be at least open to the conversation. Right idea, right? Yeah. Okay. And if there is a client that uh, doesn't want to go with any of these products, then I'd, I'd respect their value, uh, their decision as well, because it's just simply what it is. But uh, right, because you're I not Deborah yet. This... <laughs> yeah, <I'm not> <laughs> One day yeah, when you're that right. big grown-up design firm, you could say, "Ah, uh-uh, it's not happening on my watch." <laughs> not happening. On my watch. <laughs> That's right. That's awesome. That's great. And so what do you think? What do you, I mean, we've, we've talked about how it touched you and how you learned so much more about the industry than you thought you knew, even coming into it, thinking you had an understanding of it. Were there any specific takeaways or any specific insights uh, that you come to mind overall or? Well, yeah, actually, um, there are a couple. So the first thing is that you're actually part of a social, you know, this huge social movement. And that's what really blew my mind away. It's like there was a lot of people out there who are so 
excited, socially conscious, um, more socially conscious than I ever was. Um, and they're, they're sort of people that are open to this and that you're part of this huge network and that's the one takeaway. And then the other takeaway is um, the extent of it all, you know, understanding everything that's just sort of happened. And like mm. I said before, you just can't unsee what you've seen. Mm. Um, and uh, being being that person to to see that it it was uh, it's a, it changes my whole attitude, my whole perspective, and now I'm sort of armed with all that knowledge, and I can make better decisions in the future. Very exciting, very exciting. Now, have you met anybody <laughs> through the social platforms uh, from Cruelty Free Design that are in Australia? I mean, are you at least finding, even if they're not in your yeah. particular area, are you finding colleagues and so forth in your in your network there? I think, yeah, I'm finding a, that there are actually a lot more people than I think, mm-hmm. and um, <clears throat> like especially friends who are doing the same course as I am they are they are when I talk about it they're like oh wow this is such an amazing idea you know things that they can also take on board and um, you know I guess when I do deliver the message to them they want to be able to to be that person as well and say oh look this is what I've learned from this person so it's become a become a viral thing and I've I've actually um you know spoken to a few a few people um about it and they are the same um as me nice. so it, it's it's a great it's a great community i think it's just opening up people mm-hmm. really um and it's once funny, you open I can them totally up picture you know however mm. many years down the road whether it's five six years after you've you mm. feel like you've really learned what you need to learn at the firms that you work for by then how much more connections will you have how many more people in australia how many more interior yeah. designers in australia would mm. have taken the course i can totally see like in five years you get together with three colleagues and be like okay mm. it's time for us to open our own firm here you know yeah. and really run it cruelty free. jump on vegan. that bandwagon yes yeah because you know you're going yes, I, to have yeah, your work experience but you're always going mm. to be increasing your network of other designers that this is mm. a passion for them too and it's some point you'll be ready and you know who else but people who exactly share your values in this to open a firm with oh absolutely and I think there's a lot more people than I I anticipated Mm -hmm. and um and I'm sure there are people there that would want to be part of this whole idea of jumping on board and making ethical decisions and being part of the sustainable you know um uh, I guess environment so it's it's I think it's just a matter of time before mm-hmm. that happens and mm-hmm. like you said it might just take a few years to get on board and and be that person the ambassador I guess to mm-hmm. um help help um to help the animals and all the things that are happening around all the cruel things that are happening in our environment not just the animals because as it impacts our environment as well so um yeah so hopefully one day I could be that person to you know Make I'm pretty sure here. you're like... going to be that person. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. <laughs> you seem to have your head oh, on straight. You, no, I, I hear you. you I hear yeah. it. You definitely you have your head on straight. Um, you seem to be headed in a great direction. And, of course, you're going to be mentored by one of the most amazing people that I've ever met in my life, Deborah Rosenberg. And, you know, you're finding your, your people that share your values. And one by one, you're going to get us all over to your side. I'm absolutely sure of it <laughs> <laughs> I really hope so <laughs> it really is something that I want to change and uh you know it, I'm passionate about mm-hmm. it as well so yes um, no it's know, clear that you are yeah. I think it's awesome yeah thank you yeah, no, I really, I thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on the course with us here because it is nice to hear it from somebody who is, you know, on the other side of it, not inside the course, but on the outside and has experienced it and taken it in and, yeah. you know, to account for and to speak for the credibility mm-hmm. of it and that there was content and value in it because, look, there's a, a thousand things that we can all buy online and sometimes when we yeah. think about how much money something costs or whatever, we're like, well, is it going to be worth it? So it's nice to know yeah. that you felt that it was well worth your your time and your money. Oh, absolutely! It was worth every is it penny in in the US? <laughs> but yes, it's definitely worth every money, every you know dollar because it changes the way you think about right. things. And you know, I ne- I will never see um, furniture pieces the same way again, mm. especially those that have 
animal hides and um, or even decor or even mm -hmm. cosmetic. Mm -hmm. um, and then the one module yeah. includes all of the resources as well, right? So when mm -hmm. you are in that firm, you don't even have to look at the principal or the senior designer and say, well, it, you know, it took me yeah. 20 minutes to find you the leather and it took me five hours to find you the alternatives because Deborah has yeah. outlined all of that for you, right? Yeah, correct. There's mm -hmm. all these alternative solutions there that um, there's – a whole range of alternative solutions That's and awesome. all these brands that are already doing the you know the things that there's 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 vegan leather already um there's you know their fur sort of faux fur that looks exactly like the real fur mm. But um, so there are definitely alternatives out there. That's what I want to bring to my new career and, you know, potential clients and say, you know, this is equally beautiful. So right. and it's more sustainable. Right. You know? Right. Right. Um, right. Yeah. So that's basically uh, definitely worth my money. Good I would for recommend you. it to anyone, especially to those who are, you know, not keen to see it, but can be changed from it. Right, right, exactly. Well, mm. I thank you so much for sharing your insights on it and your experiences with it. And I wish you the oh, best of luck. I wouldn't, I, I'm dead serious. Hit me up in a year <laughs> after you've been working for a firm. I'd love to do a follow-up interview okay. with you that really <laughs> talks about and your experiences mm. and how you're influencing whatever firm you're working for. That would be an interesting follow-up. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, oh, man. I'll, I'll definitely take that on board and I'll, I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, speaking with you again next year and telling you all about my experience and hopefully I made a change by then. That's it. I, I, I know that you will. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Lauren. I appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you for joining me again today for another episode of A Well-Designed Business. This podcast is a production of Window Works in Livingston, New Jersey, your trade resource for custom window treatments and awnings. Learn more about Window Works at www.windowworks-nj.com. All of our music is original music by Room 2 Productions. Please contact us if you want to learn more about original music for your business or your events.